to you, and I'm going to count to three, and you're just going to go batshit crazy, and everyone's going to be like, yeah, fuck yeah! And you're going to walk to the stage named Auntie Anton. Anton, shit, I said that wrong. Anton, Anton, sorry, dude. Okay, Anton, Anton. You guys be better than me, okay? You just be a lot better than me. Okay, Lloyd, are you ready? Yeah. One, two, three, and welcome to the stage, Anton! Yeah, my name's Anthony Ayton, uh, I'm six foot five. Why do people ask me if I play basketball? <laughs> so I'm older, you would never ask a fat man if you played darts. <laughs> Other ridiculous questions I get, like, are you parents tall? Of course they are. <laughs> Black too, it's genetics, it's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> and then in pubs and stuff, it's always, hey, big man, high five. And I think, well, yeah, maybe for you. <laughs> To me, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I had one of those uh, life affirming experiences this week. I, I played table tennis with Seb, who is my friend's adorably cute eight year old. It was amazing. I fucking crushed him. <laughs> it's not the Disney Channel, I really messed him up. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, that was a point, it was, it was match point, and he kind of scooped the ball out, and he looked at me with those amazing big eyes, and he was like, Ah, was that in? And I was like, oh, Seb, where's your dignity? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, my dad, right, he's your, he's your archetypal Jamaican dad. He loves reggae, cricket, left home when I was four. <laughs> uh, it's a brother that one. <laughs> uh, and people often ask me, they say things like, well, um, did, I, did I miss out on having a, a positive role model? And I'm like, no, no, not at all. You know, my mum and, and my aunties, they were my role models in life, and that never stopped me from being a successful, independent black woman. <laughs> now, my mum had two ambitions for me. She wanted me to, uh, to have a good education and she wanted me to, to just be outstanding, really. So she, she sent me to an all white public school. <laughs> I can really spell that, huh? <laughs> and my, my housemaster, he was this massive fat guy. And just, just to give you a scale of, 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 of what it was like, you know. If he had been on Tinder, there is absolutely no way in the world that any woman would have swiped him. They'd have had to scroll across him. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was also intensely racist. This was you know this was like the early eighties. He was intensely racist, and uh, just to give you an example, one time I came back from school and and there was a poster on the door and it said that that no other children were to talk to me or to associate with me. And, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of things. I'm 45, I've seen a lot of shit in my time. But I can honestly tell you that is the closest that I've ever come to actually having an agent. I'm not going to do my own business. That's bullshit. Bullshit. Um, yeah, so, so I'm, I'm divorced now. And uh, recently I was traveling and um, I met this girl and we, we kind of clicked and during the course of the conversation I, I, it became apparent that she was 22 and you know, I'm in my 40s, there's no way I can sleep with a 22 year old woman, it'd just be creepy and weird and she wouldn't let me. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else am I going to say? Oh yeah, I'm, I used to be a criminal lawyer and um, one of, the, one of the things that struck me was that how, the way in which um, the criminalization of drugs in this country has been probably the best thing that's ever happened to the illegal, the illegal drugs industry. And so I think, well, you know, why don't we just do the intelligent thing? Let's, let's criminalize the NHS, man. <laughs> Drive that shit underground, that would really work. I, 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 <laughs> I would love to, you know, to have my doctor available 24/7 on speed. <laughs> Three six five nine, just rock something on our TT. Yeah, who's got bunions? <laughs> Like, you know, these kind of 
kind of kids on estates, disadvantaged, walking around on motorbikes, just, just nursing. <laughs> and, and tell me, who wouldn't, who wouldn't love to see Dr. Dre? You know, doing a song about actually being a fucking doctor. <laughs> All over that. Um, what else? Oh God, Brexit. Yeah, this is, this is it for me. I'll, I'll shut up after this. Um, but Boris Johnson, I'm convinced Boris Johnson was not interested in Brexit. He just wanted more points for Gryffindor. <laughs> and there's, you know, since Brexit, there's been this kind of incredible sort of spike in racism. What's, what I find really strange about it is that now we're talking about sort of white people being racist to other white people. And, you know, it, I find it, you know, it makes me feel a bit sad and I feel overlooked. <laughs> that, that used to be our thing. Just saying. <laughs> but racism is really mixed up now. You know, it's like, do you know? I I cannot be stopped from joining the BNP. Can you believe that? They they can't legally stop me from joining the BNP. Can you imagine this? Like, so I go to join the BNP, and they're like, oh, Mr. Ray, you're black. We don't want you. And I go, black. How can I be black? Some of my best friends are racist. <laughs> Black people in the BMP. We can't even get on Midsummer Murders. <laughs> anyway, my name's Nancy Aiton. You guys have been fantastic. Thank you very much. <laughs>